in Parrot Diary 26, I went over my bird here. Her name is Detta. How she hasn't been home for now over three and a half weeks. And I was trying to figure out why. Initially, I thought that she was injured and couldn't make it home. But then she moved a few hundred yards away. Okay, okay, baby, okay. This is my bird, Detta. She's really stressed right now. I figured out why she hasn't been home two days ago when she flaps her wings. Her flight feathers are missing, probably from roughhousing. And so she cannot get the lift or the distance, but she could fly. See where the arrows are? All you see is the frayed feathers. Those should be her flight feathers, and it's probably from roughhousing. But she could fly a little bit, just not enough lift and not very far. And that's why she's not home. And people say, well, why don't you just go get her? Because I'm not forcing her to do anything. I don't want to traumatize her like that. That's her on top of that trailer thing and her brother with her. And this property is all the way fenced in. And I could feed her over there because she was in the tree, but then she moved to she moved to the tree right there in the middle of this property in between all these trucks and other stuff, stuff everywhere. Okay, you can see her in the lower part of the tree, like her head and her brother on top of the end of the truck. Well, I had to get to her to feed her because it was starting to rain and she needed nutrients in her body to get through the cold night, even though they're not gonna get cold. So no one was home and I had to get to her, so I did. And then I find out that a few years ago, the property was raided by the FBI ATF. And the person that owns it is like sergeant in arms for a very rough motorcycle gang. Luckily, she moved from this motorcycle gang property right here to right next door here, where... Luckily, she moved from the motorcycle gang property from these trucks. She got on the fence. I was feeding her right here. Then she got on these trees here, and she's moved right over here. And she's still really stressed, so... I'm just here in case she lands low or something. But anyway, see these big trucks right here? When the FBI, it was on the front page news in uh, Las Vegas and everything. FBI and ATF raided it. And they have apparently the cargo area, the neighbor told me. They had a meth lab. It's funny. Well, speaking of meth labs, check out this photo of me and uh, my coronavirus mask on. I look like I should be in the meth lab. I got to switch my look up better because I look like I should be in the meth lab right there. They, they really do camouflage well. You would think with being primarily, I mean, all primary colors that you would just stand out, but they don't. Um, and sometimes the stress is more harmful than the damage. So she's already stressed enough. I see her flapping her wings. I see the problem and I'm letting her just do it in her own way. And I feed her every day and I check up on her. And of course I worry about her. How could I not? I love her. She was born the day my father was died. She's pretty low to the ground compared to where she usually would be on a telephone wire or something. So I'm really concerned about her. So I'm out here making sure Dad is okay. I heard some screaming far away and it sounded like it was chewy and then they showed up. What happened? Why was all that screaming for? What was that screaming for? Okay, the injured one, Detta. This is her brother right here, Ernie. And he's really curious about my 
fingers and my hands. And I know it's really scary, but he's pretty gentle. Sometimes he'll do it a little too hard though. I bite my fingernails anyway, so. I love this big dorky bird, Ernie. He's six years old. Him and his sister right there, Detta, were born the day my father passed away. And there was one more Tesla who was awesome, who was electrocuted on a faulty power line. And it just breaks my heart. I loved her so much. But it's a price of freedom. And one year of freedom is better than 100 years in a cage. And see how Ernie's really comfortable on me and exploring. So is Chewie up there. But Detta is the only one that's not. And it's because when she was a little over one years old, she was a few miles away at Treasures uh, Recreational Park. And somewhere outside there, some idiot couple decided to try and catch her and they nearly killed her in the process. They stepped on her, they crushed her wing, her organs, everything. I spent a lot of money, get, I would have spent everything I had getting her, you know, wing fixed and luckily she's able to fly again. But the people that hurt her, I this day I would love to burn their house down with their kid in it. Or better yet, I would love to string them up right here behind my vehicle and then show her, show her those people, you know, that hurt her. And actually one night I had the address of the people that did it. And uh, I thought, okay, I, I'm just going to go by their house. I just want to know, see where these people live. Why are we superior? Because... Uh, we have trucks here that we can have a meth lab in the back because what? We have cars because we have cancer, because we have taxes, because we have passports, because we have airplanes. We're not superior at all. In fact, these birds are much smarter than us. They don't have divorce. They don't have um, mortgages. They don't have processed foods. They're not obese unless a human has them. You know, it's, why are we smarter than everything else? Because we can dominate them and make them our slaves and our prisoners, is that why? I don't think that makes us smarter. I think it makes us the losers. Look at, they don't commit suicide only if we have them in captivity. That's when they want to commit suicide. That's when they self-mutilate. You. That's when they feather pluck, self-mutilate, get nervous tics. In the wild, they don't try and kill themselves. Yeah, there's dangers in the wild, but that's just the way the world works. When the sister Tesla was electrocuted on the faulty power line, Valley Electric here, the three head, the board of directors called me and their apologies were sincere, were truly sincere. And they came out and they fixed the, fixed the power line and they checked all the ones in the area and all over and they fixed, went over them and fixed all the ones that had a thing. God, it was so sad picking up her body. Like it happened on Christmas day. It caused a power outage for a couple hours. But I put out immediately reward, $10,000 for her. Because look it, money is supposed to make you happy, right? And Tesla made me happy, so I wanted to find her. And people rat out their own mother for $100. So I get a call from this girl, this lady, and she says, um, I think I have your bird, and I think it was electrocuted on this, my yard. I thought it was a prank call because it just was so bizarre. 
and I was kind of rude and I just I asked her where she lived and I went there sure enough I walked back there and picked up her beautiful red body with her burnt feathers on the ground oh did it hurt I loved her and um and that's what happened to their sister. And look, they live as long as us. This boy right here, Ernie, he's six. He could have 94 years to go. And her too. And her longer. The one at the top of the tree that's chewy. She's three years younger. This is Mr. Curious. He is so curious. When it took him a while till he was comfortable enough to get on me. And now I just hate it. Every time he gets on me, I just hate it. I hate how he wants to touch my mouth, my face, my fingers. What's that? Whoa! Whoa! Choo! Choo choo! Chooies! Choo choo! Choo! Woo! It's okay, Choo. It's okay, Chewy. Come here, Choo Choo. See those two crows? She's probably right by those crows' nest or something. It's okay, Choo. I mean, really, she's, my birds are no match. <coughs> See, they know that they're safe on my car. But Detta, she's just standoffish because of her horrible experience. And sure, yeah, it's time consuming, but I don't care. Right now, see, she's flapping her wings because she really wants to fly. And when she's flapping like that, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, she's flapping like that. She's trying to see if she has the lift and the strength. See, she can't do it. Come on, Dieta. She can't do it. She's trying. It's so painful for me to see it. Uh, okay, baby. Come to my car, baby. Come here. Come here, Dieta. Come here. Come on my car, please. Come here, Dieta. Come here. Come to my car. Come on. Come on, Dieta. Come here. Dada, come here. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. And of course, I wonder, like, how did she lose her, how did she break her flight feathers? See, she normally would be up high. went somewhere. Where'd he go to? Where is he to? Oh, there he is. He's over on that roof. She's probably going to go to him. Here she goes. See something beautiful? Right here. Watch this. It's beautiful.
Got to be the worst camera person possible. And so, I don't know. Come on, Dieta. Come on my car, baby. Come here. Come here, Dieta. Come here. Come on my car. Come here. Well, I'm staying with her till it's bedtime, so I know where she is. I just fed her some nuts and a tangerine, but my phone died. And right now, as I'm sitting out here with her, I was someone called, tried to call me named Melody. And I got this email from her a little about a few weeks ago or so. I'm going to show it to you. This is the email I got. Hi, Heidi. I used to work at Wiener's office many years ago. That's a man named Michael Wiener who started Dove Audio, who did lots of books, and a lot of them were bestsellers, but they were kind of sleazy. By chance, I am now managing his ghost writer, Julie McCarran. Her bio is attached. She has since written a New York Times bestseller with Mary Jo Buttafuoco and books with Bill Maher, Gene Simmons, Rick Springfield. We think now is the perfect time for you to write another book. We feel confident that you can get a terrific offer from a publisher, which we could assist as well. Please keep us in mind should you ever have any interest in a literary project. So I call. So I'm out here with my birds. There's one there, one up there, and one way, way back there on the telephone wire, right there. And I made the business call to the agent and I told her, you know, what my concerns are and that I'm not shopping my story to anyone. If someone came to me with a, you know, book, a series and a five to 10 million range of, you know, I need uh, royalties because those things will be playing for, you as long as humanity's here, they'll be playing that stuff. And I want to be paid every single time it, it, that stuff plays. And I want to get paid every time a book sells. It, you know, I waited this long, so. And there has to be some level of trust anyways. I mean, if you think I'm going to screw you, then whatever. But she, you know, one can, some of her concerns are valid that, you know, if an accident happened, that's why we call it accidents, because we don't know they're going to happen. We hear screaming in the background. She needs to, like, collect from her share from the estate or whatever, stuff like that, which is fine. So, but I'm, I read her agreement, some standard agreement that's, oh, here he comes. Look at him. Isn't that beautiful? I got it. I'm just going to write an agreement myself and send it to her. And she's only going to go to one lady at one publishing house. So maybe they offer nothing, or maybe they offer $10, or maybe they offer $10 million. going home. There they go, all the way home. Beautiful. I know that uh, I know, Birdie. I'm sorry. Come here, Dieta. Come here. Come here in the car. Come here in the car, Dieta. Come here, Dieta. Come here in the car. 
So she's going to, I'm going to write up my own agreement and send it to her. And she's going to contact one person at one publishing house, which is fine with me. And, uh, I'll, uh, you know, damn, I hate driving away from her. I just hate driving away and leaving her. And then my other project I've been working on is because of my life-changing financial error, which I should have caught on to the theft by Elizabeth Keating Schneider, however you pronounce her name. I was My drug addiction, I really pay the price with the, being a drug addict. That's what I get because I should have caught on to it reading those transcripts. Well, anyway, so... One day I was like, you know, I got to, I think I said, I just got to move past this. And if I really want my money, go there and get it. And I could, but I'm not, I can handle trial. I can handle any kind of sentence or maybe self-defense. I don't know, but I can't handle walking away from these birds, all the birds that are suffering, the ones, if they that will be just locked in cages forever. I can't do that. So uh, what could I do that's, uh realistic and come back so I designed a broom a really cool broom patent pending that's modern looking and it has an LED light on it uh, illuminating the ground so you can see shards of glass or dust better dirt and whatnot but more than being aesthetically beautiful function wise it's superior I researched the bristles and monofilaments and coatings um, so that well what's best at uh, first of all it's 100% germicidal bristles not one not I'm sorry 99% germicidal more than any other broom on the marketplace and I researched the different coatings that can be applied to the monofilaments on the bristles so this broom works superior and um, that's the most important thing. You want to, no one likes, you don't want to spend your life sweeping and you want to clean that mess up. So this will do it. So I've been making final revisions to um, my prototype, which I should have this week. Uh, you know, everybody tries to get over on you. So I hired someone from Upwork. Um, on, it's an app, you know, where you choose who you, an engineer, who choose you want on Upwork and you hire them uh, so many people replied to me but one guy's resume is really good and I spoke with him and he gave me a time frame and whatnot but when he gave me the time frame in my head I was thinking if this guy is that good there's no possible way that this could take him that long but instead of just thinking that I should have expressed that which I did not because I don't know if it's taking, if it took this long because he just dragged it out, which is most likely the case. But anyways, you know, I really learning about, I'm still sitting here with my bird. I don't want to leave her and her brother, Jesse just showed up. He's going to come. He's so beautiful. He's going to show up to see her. She gets so happy when he comes to see her. Yeah, her brother just showed up and she's happy. Probably coming to say goodnight. So this book, of course, is going to be about when I was uh, had my sex business and all the details of the stuff I think is so ridiculous. And it's crazy, just society how these birds and it took me years to truly understand the gravity of the situation and how they suffer Look how beautiful that is making them live solo in cages is just wrong for our, our own enjoyment And there are people out there who are wonderful owners, so I'm not directing it at him, but for the most part, 
I would say 99% really suffer. I went on Craigslist to look for a mail for her, <laughs> and I couldn't help but trolling some of the people. And all of them, I was like, you keep your bird in that. How would you feel if it was you? And they were, all came back with the, if, you know, a bird in captivity lives longer than in the wild. Well, I'm not talking about a bird that. I'm talking about how you keep these birds and you force them to live and die in a cage. And one of them wrote back, I keep them in huge, beautiful, four foot by eight foot aviaries. Four foot by eight foot? Really? How about this? Four foot by eight foot? Really? Wow. Wow. How lucky those birds are, four foot by eight foot. Jesus, people. It's incredible how people don't realize what they are doing is so ignorant and wrong and cruel. You know, their whole body breaks down from a sedentary life because they're not meant for that. Their respiratory system fails. Their digestive system fails. Their immune system weakens. And back when they were importing all these, um, you know, poached birds from the wild, the ones in captivity started dying. And the zoologists and scientists couldn't figure out why, and the experts and stuff. And after all their studying, they came, saw it had a virus, and they have a huge long name for it. It's like PPV, Papilloma, Bavian, Bonaticular or something. But, um, and then they, for short, they call it macaw wasting disease. Well, look at I got a ninth grade education and I can tell you exactly the cause of why they're dying. And it's because they're not supposed to be living in cages. You don't need all those studies and scientists and zoologists and experts. What idiots. Hi, babies. I'm sorry, Dieta. Hi, Verdi. They love each other. She's so happy when he's there. You hear them purring? See how affectionate they are with each other. They need that. They're social animals. They're not meant to live solo in the cages. And they're not meant to be forced with another mate. They're meant to choose their own. We don't like arranged marriages. He does come home at night. It's so sad when he leaves her. And the, yeah, I do have a struggle with the disease of addiction, but I've been sober. And my feelings for these animals, my, they tug on my heartstrings just as strongly. 
and intrinsically, I know what I'm doing is right. And somebody has to try and change. The subjugation of the species. I never thought it would be me. I'm going to leave right now. It's going to be really sad. That is my Birdetta. And Jessie, I got her home, and I'm so relieved. It was really difficult. It was really hard. But she was positioned low on the fence. I'll show the picture right now. That's about 8 a.m. this morning. She was positioned low on the fence. And then her brother flew across the street. So I watched her climb down the fence. She made sure there were no cars. And then she walked across the street, which is very unusual. So she's really having a problem flying. And I got up the nerve after a couple hours to just grab her. It took me a couple hours and I just grabbed her and I put her in the car and went home. And she screamed bloody murder, but she was happy when she was home. And that's the mom and dad. And I was so relieved. See, that's the mother right there. Golly. Hi, golly. That's Paul, the father. Hi, babies. Hello. Hello, golly. What are you doing? Hi. And the mom and dad took them right here. And them right here. So, and it had quite an impact on any business that I have going on and whatnot because I do worry about them. I don't just set them free and don't think about them. In the past few days, I was spending so much time with her while she was injured that these crazy ones want attention. You! Wait for me. You! You! celebrity bedrooms or something. And it had every famous person you could think of. And you looked at their bedroom. And then when I was done, I could not get the real
real deal. I'm not some Scientology animal rescue trying to beat the government out of paying federal taxes. I really spend everything on them. I really am a sanctuary. As you can see, everything is to try and reverse the trauma that they've endured. And they have endured. She, right there, was kept in a dog kennel for nine months. A dog rescue. She was... They sleep here at night, and in the, as soon as it's daylight, they're outside. These right here, earlier you saw them on me, away from my house, see, right there. They go in and out, in and out as they please. Hello. Hello, You see right there? They can go in and out whenever they want. Okay, back to the agent. After all that I discussed, I had that anxiety over her contract. I told her my concerns, her contract. I said, look, it, if all you're concerned about is your 15%, that's not, you know, that's all the contract needs to say. She agreed back and forth, long conversation. And then she agreed, send it to me. And what did she send me? The same thing with all this other stuff about travel expenses. Blah, 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 blah. I'll show it right now. Okay, this is some of her agreement. And it says, manager sir, during the term, manager agrees to use reasonable efforts to promote, develop, advance artists' professional career and to advise and counsel artists with uh, respect to his positioning in the entertainment industry, blah, blah, blah. And then it says, I'll skip. Manager shall not be required to travel or to meet with artists at any particular times or places except in manager's discretion and provided that arrangements have been made for costs and expenses of such travel to be paid for by artists. So basically, if she wants to travel anywhere and decides she wants me to pay. Okay, I'll go to some more of this stuff. Here's some more of it. Exclusivity, artists shall not during the term of this agreement engage in any other person, firm, or corporation, or otherwise to act on his behalf in the capacity of personal manager for the services outlined in section blah, blah, blah. Manager's commission, 15% of gross. And then it goes on and on. A bunch of more stuff to go on here. If you want, you can read some of it, but I can't read her stuff anymore. There's more I'm going to put on here right now. And here's more of it. Indemnification, okay? Um, payments and accounting, blah, 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 all this stuff. So I went over it with her. I told her, no, if, you know, if, if you bring me, I'm not tying myself down to anything unless there's money behind it. And I'm not looking, I'm not looking for a manager. I'm not even looking for a book deal. So then she agrees and she said she understands me and she'll redo it and send it to me. 
And I told her I'm already getting tired of the back and forth. Okay, so after all this back and forth, she said she got it really narrowed down. I'll give her credit because she got it down to, I think, two pages, but it still says this agreement terms a territory, this agreement at the term shall consist of an initial period of one year commencing upon this date. Why do I need a year? Then um, her services, her commissions, um, there's, you know, like this is way beyond what, I, I'm not looking for a manager, an agent or anything. And then it goes into um, miscellaneous and then something about a co-producer and when this expires, the manager will receive the commission with respect to the engagements and agreements entered into, blah, 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 the term, which for purposes of clarity shall also apply to any existence, renewals, or renegotiations. Okay, well, this is way too much for me. So I told her, I can't do this. I'm not looking for it. And if you have five to $10 million deal, then I'll talk about signing something. But you want me to sign something that doesn't exist? And then she said, okay, she gets it. She's fine. She trusts me uh, about her commission. But she wanted me to put in writing that she gets her commission. And then she added plus royalties. But she didn't tell me that before. All of a sudden, it's plus royalties. So somewhere it's plus royalties is hidden in that contract. Uh-huh, golly. And then she, but I got her to agree with me, and she said, just do that. And if I can just sign uh, the writer, the ghost writer, Julie, if I'll sign, if I'll sign her contract. And I said, well, but why is that? That's that's not even up to me, you know? All I care about is getting paid. Why am I, am I I'm making it contingent upon somebody I do not know? And then she told me that Julie gets one, one third of my, hello, of my money. And I mean, this is just, I, I don't know, but I know that's how regular book deals go, but I'm not a regular book deal. Hey you, I see you crazy. I got you, Red. I got you, Crazy. I got you. I got you. I got you, got you, got you. I got you. Got you. That's, I respect her for trying, but look at, she probably, she could have maybe got some decent offer and made some money with me, but there were hidden things. There were hidden things, and I just can't do that at this point in my life. Hi, Red. Hi, Crazy. Hi, Crazy. Hi, Red. Hello. Maybe there's a time when I would be really high and just sign something like that and create all kinds of problems for myself. Not that I'm sober, but I know now enough not to create problems for myself. I see you. I see you. They're trying to take our money. They're trying to take our money. They're trying to take all our money, you guys. They're trying to take our money. We need the money. You need the money. You need the money. You need the money. Their whole life, babies. They want to separate me and my money, babies. Oh, you. So anyways, I kind of just left it. I, I'm not game for it. If you come with me with an offer, blah, blah, blah. All right. Thank you for watching. This was this morning. Sorry about my bad photography.